Hey everyone, welcome back to AutoX, the channel where we feature some of the coolest vehicles from around the world. Some are wacky, some are wild, and some are just downright rare. Right in front of me is a 1992 Toyota Tomboy motorhome. Now this Tomboy motorhome is very interesting. It's built on the Toyota High Ace truck chassis. This is a 4x4 diesel chassis, 5 speed, and the coach was assembled by Bigfoot Industries in Vernon, BC. Back in the day, they built these and they sent them to Japan, where they were mated onto these high ace trucks, and it formed a really perfect match, in my opinion. So we have a full fiberglass coach with the proprietary fiber core wall system, which is Bigfoot's wall system that has R12 insulation, super sturdy, um, just a very good, very warm, very robust setup for a motorhome. Um, so this is a true four season motorhome. The holding tanks are insulated and ducted and it's just, really well made. If anyone is familiar with the Bigfoot quality, they're still making truck campers and trailers today, then they know what we're talking about. So why don't we take a peek in the cab. First thing I want to point out is manual locking hubs, because this is a part-time four-wheel drive system. You can turn the hubs, lock those out to engage your front axle. Normally you're driving in rear-wheel drive unless you need 4x4. Super clean, utilitarian, tidy door cards, all plastic, nothing to go wrong, roll down windows. This um, unit was exceptionally well taken care of. If we look at the shine in the fiberglass and the, the quality of these decals, which are original, this thing was kept inside most likely for all of its years. Um, there are just really no flaws with this thing on the body. It only has 41,000 miles. Sorry, I said I was gonna go inside and we're just gonna go over some of the exterior features a little bit more. A really robust backup camera up there and that's your hood range vent. Molded fiberglass rear bumper. Again, the badging, I don't know if you guys can see the shine on this, but it's just, it's really miraculous, the condition that this is in. Um, so we'll go around and we'll open some of the compartments because I'm sure you guys are curious about, about all of that. This is where your propane lives. Right now it's not hooked up. So that just has to be fitted with a propane tank of your choice and the adapter can be changed over so you can adapt to North American tanks. Here is your power outlet. We've sourced a new door for this so that will be replaced. Um, the plastic cover just broke off. This is the back end of your propane hot water heater. And here is where you fill your diesel tank there and your coach batteries are stored there. So this is uh, access to your black tank. As you can see, some of your ducting is accessed through here. Every door has a holder for it. This is further access to your black tank and gray tank blade valves. So you pull these to release your, your tanks when you're dumping. In here is city water hookup. So if you're at a campground that has pressurized water, hook up there. That's your power, as I stated earlier, for your shore. Um, so that 
about does it for the driver's side. And I want to say it's a one key fits all situation, which is very good. So you're not fussing about with multiple keys, what key goes where, all that nonsense. So down here is a molded storage compartment into your fiberglass. And then here is access to your truck battery batteries in this case um, all right and then your fresh water fill here which fills your tank and the vent for that uh, it's a 90 liter tank so about 22 gallons or so uh, vent for your forced air propane furnace awning feet go in here got a little porch light and there is a large awning. I want to say that's probably a 10 foot that goes across. All right, so let's get back to the interior cab. Utility spec. These were built as work trucks to get the job done. Kind of a no frills dash here. Big glove box, some spare lights in there. All weather floor mats underneath, you've got just a vinyl floor, which is super tidy and clean. Uh, your dash here, you've got a CRT backup camera, which works really well. And this is your passenger bench, so you can see two here and one there in the driver's seat. And engine access is under here, but the upholstery is just like new on this thing. So we'll go around to the driver's side and uh, yeah, just give you another look down the line here. Super clean. It's got a really cool classic front end with these kind of bug eye headlights and you know, this 3D high ace badge and the old school Toyota grill, which is just in really good condition. Everything from the bumper to the grill factory fog lights which work and your four wheel drive badge here what a beautiful beautifully kept and beautiful camper it's really hard to find any camper in this condition from 1992 or even 2002 all right so more high ace badging down the side here and you've got these big convex mirrors so you can see everything and this front round one actually shows you your your bumper distance which is really convenient all right we'll look in the driver's seat now point out some of the controls so again super tidy door card functional just to roll down with a map pocket and the manual lock um, stepping in again original floor mat here and vinyl floors underneath Everything is vinyl. Seat is immaculate. 41,000 miles, if I didn't say that already. Pop in. All right, have a look at the cluster. So 65, 850 kilometers, which is about 41,000 miles or so. Got your high ace badge steering wheel right here. And your climate controls, warm, cool, AC control fan, blower, motor, and all of that. Aftermarket CD with a little tray here and uh, cup holders. Kind of neat. Cigarette lighter, the 12 volt outlet, ashtray. This thing has never been smoked in. This is your choke or your idle up knob. Air intake. Pull this and it no longer pulls air from down there. It reverts to pull air from a higher point. So if you're driving through flooded waters or anything, you won't suck air into your engine. And your fan control for the rear, you can pipe your heating and your AC into the rear. There's vents there and that runs off the engine. Backup camera, as I mentioned, down here, fog light switch. And then you've got these cool twisty vents, kind of Land Cruiser style. 
um, which I like. Omnidirectional. And uh, yeah, got some remaining headliner up here, which is immaculate. And five speed, floor shift. One, two, three, four, five. And then reverse is there. Down here is your high four, high two, and L4, so your transfer case. So we're in H2, that would be H4, and then you would go down and forward to low, to low range. Uh, and your parking brake is here. And horn. Okay, so what do you guys say we take a look in the rear? I know this is the moment you've all been waiting for. So let's hop inside. Porch light. Deadbolt and Trimark handle with another lock built in. We've got an inner screen. She's in good shape. Stepping in, you've got this basement area as most Bigfoots are designed, so it's all insulated through the floor, so we're met with a, here is your kitchen, your galley, open this up and you've got a two burner propane, over here is your monitor, so you can view all your levels, I'll get them to respond, and then water pump, you can hear running, good light, and a fan. We've got all the interior lights on, so you've got a sink here with a hot, cold and hot um, knob. Now this is all really well made cabinetry, solid wood, and Bigfoot's kind of thing. It's just fantastic. We've got a Norcold um, two-way fridge, AC-DC. Got some nice Storage under here. I forgot to point out these cubbies here. It's kind of like a shoe cubby because it is a Japanese camper after all. And here you also have an additional drawer and more access under here for storage. All right. So here is your interior. You've got a couch on the left, a dinette on the right. A big cab over bed that pulls out, skylight above it, left and right side, overhead cabinets. In front of me, we've got a wardrobe where you can hang stuff up there. This is all finished in a really nice birch wood. At least that's the color, I call it. Okay, I'm sure drawers aren't all that interesting. Take a look in the bathroom. It's a full wet bath. So, your faucet, you've got your sink, fiber, molded fiberglass bathroom, and your toilet, as well as an overhead skylight and vent, and a vanity storage area. There's also um, the ability to add a shower curtain on those rings there. Okay, and a mirror here, obviously. More overhead, lots of overhead storage. And this thing is watertight. There is really no signs of water damage. We looked it over, we double checked the roof, we resealed anything that looked like it needed to be, but this thing was really well kept. So. What a nice unit. This is probably one of the more premium units that you could get in Japan. It's, it's better made, in my opinion, than a Vantag or a Remo or any of those Zills that you see. Um, so curtains, sliding 50-50 slider window with a bug screen. Same goes for this side. We've got seat belts here for one, two, three, four. So you can seat one, two, three up front, 
four here, so seven in total with belts. This dinette turns into a bed, as does this, so this whole space becomes a bed. So that's about 65 inches long and about 72 inches, 70 to 72 inches wide. Upper bunk, we've got these really cozy side lamps here. So the way this works is it pulls out like that. Push this back, pull it out some more, doing it one handed so it's really not that hard. That goes down like that and then you've got a nice huge bed measuring 72 inches long by 70 inches wide. That is huge. And then you've got your skylight with your uh, sun hooks. I'm not going to do it right now because I have one hand, but if you want to pull that to the side, you can see the sky. All right, so that's your big bed, and it really doesn't intrude on the living space that much. So you can still sit here and use this dinette, even though the bed comes out to just about here. Um, and short people can still sit here. Here. Cushions feel great. There's no sogginess or sagginess in these things. They're, it's got the original linoleum floor, which is in great condition. As you can see, there's no marks or anything. Um, it's very comfy. This is just Bigfoot quality. We've had a few Bigfoots ranging from the 90s all the way up to the 2000s um, in and out of our shop, and we just know them well, and this thing holds to the reputation, but it's mated to a Toyota four-wheel drive diesel truck. Really, does it get much better than that? I don't know. Let us know what you think in the comments, though. I'll show you the right side cabinets just for posteria. This is a double shelf posterity. And your single one. Thermostat control for your hydro flame furnace. That reminds me, all the appliances in here are North American because assembled in Canada. So making it serviceable, your coach end of things, easy to service here. And it's got the Toyota 2L engine, which is the younger brother to the 3L, the same engine that Top Gear tried to kill in the Hilux. They put them in the Hiluxes all throughout the 80s and 90s. Bulletproof, mechanically injected engine. Really simple, no computers, no electronics. Give you a look at the headliner. So I'm standing here. We're about probably six foot in this area. And then, it, as you can see, the ceiling tapers up. And in this living space, it's about 74 and a half inches of headroom. And about six feet of headroom here, maybe six one-ish. So what a nice camper, guys. I'm so excited for this thing. Um, your vent for your furnace and ducting in here for your freshwater tank. Pretty sweet. All right, so let's hop out and we'll get into some other aspects of this video. One really neat thing about this camper, guys, is the original owner kept all the original documentation. So in this file, we've got records of service, an extra set of keys, of all keys, um, and every little owner's manual from the radio, to the toilet, to the awning. These are the service records that are performed in Japan, showing what was serviced, when, what year, what mileage. High Ace truck manual, as well as the supplement, which shows additional specs for service. And then here is actually, in Japanese, but the camper manual itself, showing everything you need to know about the operation of this camper. So very easy to translate this with just a Google Translate app. You can take photos and it translates it pretty much instantly. So it's just really cool to see that everything was kept together. And then did not expect to find this, but the original brochure for this motorhome, as you can see, they came in two different colors. And it's in great condition. It opens up to a full spread 
showing all the different specs, your dimensions, kind of all the different setups. Very cool. It's almost like this was stored in a time capsule. Anyways, just super excited to share that with y'all. So there it is. Um, now I think we're gonna take this thing for a test drive and show you guys how it cruises. Let's fire it up, wait for the glow plug light. There it goes. Turns right over, park and brake light. All right, we got the dash cam running. As you can see, this works. You can uh, turn it on and off. It's an actual old school CRT. Love that. These 2.4 liter 2L engines, um, they're not speed demons, but they are reliable as heck. These engines are generally fuss free as long as you pay attention to and maintain the cooling system um, and don't let them overheat, like any engine. Uh, it will last you many faithful years and hundreds of thousands of miles of service. Uh, same engine that Top Gear tried to kill back in their Hilux episode, and they couldn't kill it. Uh, same engine that Toyota put in the Hilux throughout the 80s and 90s, essentially the younger brother, almost identical to the 3L. Uh, they are a stout little simple diesel engine. Toyota put them mainly in commercial spec vehicles for that reason. They're meant to rack up many KMs or miles and uh, get work done. This thing handles oh, like a motorhome as you'd expect. It's uh, generally quite stable. Um, it feels very new in the cabin, not a lot of wear and tear with only 41,000 miles and just a very meticulous one owner. Um, it feels very much like I, I believe these would feel new out of the box back in the 90s. I like it. You're upright, you're sitting cab over on top of your front wheels. Um, so you've got all this visibility. It's a kind of a commanding presence on the road. You can see everything and you're sitting up high and uh, that's why a lot of people like these, these vehicles. It does have torque when you get into it, and um, it certainly keeps up on the highway. So we put about uh, 200 miles on this so far, and uh, most of that was highway interstate driving, where we were going about, about 60. And that's kind of the comfort zone, 60 to 65 is where these like to cruise. When you hit the hills, 
Um, you know, expect to maybe downshift if you're going up a big grade. But it does have the torque and the get up and go to kind of get you there at a safe speed. Um, you're not going to be cruising 80 up the passes. And if that's something that you want to do, then maybe this isn't the best uh, fit for you. But if you want something that's reliable and well built from both the mechanical end and the coach end, then this Tomboy is kind of hits the sweet spot. Being the Toyota chassis with the simple diesel, the 4x4, high low range transfer case, proper truck four wheel drive, and then you've got the Bigfoot coach on the back. Those two companies should have worked together more. That's all I can say. If they were making Bigfoot campers on the back of Tacomas or Tundras or Land Cruisers, that is where it's at. Um, having had years of experience with both all sorts of Toyotas and Bigfoots, the two, the two favorite companies of mine combined to make this wonderful tomboy. Fortunately, they didn't make too many of them. Um, couldn't have been more than a handful, really. I don't know, 50 units or less is my guesstimate because we haven't seen really any of these over the years. We've seen more Hilux Galaxies than these, and I know they only made 80 or so of those. So I would wager to say they made probably somewhere to the tune of 40 to 60 of these units. Um, and I don't think they made them past maybe 1993. The only units we've seen have been um, 91s and 92s. So it's possible that this deal between the two companies only lasted a year or two. And uh, this is one of the most prized examples that, that's still on the road certainly the nicest one that's been imported to the U.S. I know maybe only two or three have made it over here, as far as I know. Um, but having seen one of those, I'm pretty sure this is uh, the nicest one that exists here in North America. And perhaps the nicest one that exists, period, still. Everything feels good. Power delivery is where it should be. Um, the brakes are on the money. There's no pulsating, no pulling. The steering is tight and good. And the camper goes where you point it. So it's ready for its new home. Um, we just went through to had a service done on it. Cooling system flush, some belts, as well as um, new batteries on the coach end and the, uh, the truck end of things. So this thing is ready to rock and we've been anticipating its arrival for quite some time. I know a few of you folks are waiting in the rafters for this video and this photo shoot that happened today to go up. It's been a long time coming. Shipping times out of Japan have been uh, pretty strenuous, but we're glad this made it here. And man, we are so happy to see the condition it's arrived in. It has blown our expectations through the roof. We normally source pretty clean vehicles, but this one is exceptional. Um, I, I don't think we'll ever see another one quite this clean, if any, um, because these Tomboys are just getting harder and harder to find, being that they only ran two years of production, made only a few. Well, you know how it goes. Little 2L engine just kind of puts along. I'm barely into the throttle, so there's a lot of meat left to, to get you there. Around town, third gear is pretty good. Gearbox feels firm and tight. Clutch also feels good.
Thanks guys for watching this video. This is a 1992 Toyota Hiace Tomboy Camper. And stay tuned for more. Check us out at autox.com. This one's now available for sale in Portland, Oregon. Thanks so much for watching.